What are Pymetrics games? You may have heard about them, whether it's in a job posting or maybe you just got an email from a company you just applied to inviting you to play their games. This is a necessary step to make it to the interview stage for more and more companies. The only problem is no one ever teaches you how to perform well at them. That's why in this video we'll go over my tested 5 steps to understand what to prepare for Pymetrics games and how to practice before taking the real test. Let's start! The hiring process is broken. 99% of candidates get rejected, while 45% never hear back. If that sounds familiar to you, you're in luck, because Pymetrix wants to change that by leveraging behavioral science and AI technology to help companies build diverse teams based on skills, not resumes. Countless studies showed that resume content like degrees and past experiences don't provide enough proof to indicate a person's future performance in a job. Soft skills, on the other hand, give a better idea of understanding the true potential a candidate has. You can train for hard skills, but not soft skills. For example, you can teach someone how to code or how to build a nice presentation, but it's harder to teach them how to be generous or how to be more emotionally intelligent. And there's data to back this up. According to a 2019 survey of recruiters by LinkedIn, 89% of failed hires lacked soft skills. Researchers have found that people who are in roles that align with their personality, preferences and skills are more satisfied and perform better on the job. This is where Pymetrix comes into play. Their goal is to match your own soft skills and personality with the right job. But how do they do that? How can they certainly assess your level of soft skills and personality? Their team of scientists created games to understand to which extent do you possess relevant soft skills for specific jobs. For example, if you apply to be a waiter, one of the soft skills a restaurant might want to test you for is short-term memory, since you need to remember many orders at the same time and clients' names. Testing short-term memory on a questionnaire or in a resume is just impossible. That's why Pymetrix uses a games of words or numbers to assess that specific skill. That test would be seeing numbers on a screen and trying to recall as many of them as possible. I tried it and it's quite challenging. The question then becomes, what skills do you need to be considered a fit for a job? Based on years of research, Pymetrix understood the main soft skills they needed to test to forecast a candidate's performance. And those are altruism, attention, cognitive flexibility, decision-making, effort expenditure, emotion focus, fairness, perceptions, learning, and risk aversion. Your performance in the games will tell us if you're closer to scores on the right or left. Based on the role you're applying to, however, they might look at specific skills more than others. For example, being generous could be a requirement for healthcare workers, but being frugal might be more appropriate for a marketing coordinator taking care of a tight budget. Here are a couple of examples for a few jobs. For a systems engineering role, it's more relevant to be generous, biased to action, multitasking. But for a digital marketing role, it's nearly the opposite. You need to be frugal, methodical, and inclined to focusing. For other roles like data science, you see that emotion focus is not even tested because they just judged that skill didn't forecast candidates' performance. You might ask yourself then, what skills will you be tested for, for the job you just applied to? In this step, we'll analyze what skills you need to be considered a fit with your target role. But before, let me tell you, you can't learn soft skills in a day or two. However, I have seen countless candidates with relevant soft skills fail multiple times just because of stress and external factors. This is what we will try to avoid here. This preparation will help you be yourself and let your personality and skills shine. For this video, I'm going to apply for an investment banking job. The first step that I would need to perform is go on Google and type name of the role plus soft skills. Browse some websites and make a list in a Word document. This is what it looks like for investment banking. Number two, based on your list, let's go back to the Pymetrix soft skills and try to guess what they would want us to be. For altruism, since we work with money and our goal is to make a ton of it, I guess you need to be frugal. For attention, it says here I need to be dedicated and have critical thinking, so I would guess we would need to be methodical, more than biased to action. For cognitive flexibility, I'm pretty sure you need to be inclined to focusing more than anything else. For decision making, I would say deliberate, since you need to be calm under pressure and again, you need critical thinking, you need to make good decisions based on data, not just instinct. 
You might disagree with some of my answers. I might be wrong on a couple of ones here. However, this exercise isn't done to know exactly how to answer, but to be more cautious about how we're tested and knowing how to react to specific scenarios we'll be encountering in the games. My final table looks like this. Now that we know approximately what the company wants to see, let's go ahead and practice showing off these soft skills using a couple of apps. But before, if you're enjoying the video so far, then hit the like button, it would be awesome. Based on the soft skills you found in the previous step, your next goal is to find brain games to help you test those. What I did was Googling specific terms such as cognitive flexibility brain games or attention focused brain games. You will probably find hundreds of games online or in the app store on your phone, but I'll show you three of my favorite ones. Some of them are paid if you want all the features, but don't worry, they all give you a seven day trial, which is enough in my opinion to practice, play the Pymetrix games and move on with your life. So let's start with the first one, the Elevate app. As soon as you open the app, they will test you for several traits like processing, reading, memory, and math, which I enjoyed so that they give you an appropriate level to start from. Now, this game doesn't explicitly tie to the soft skills we listed previously. However, I can still see some games being relevant to us. For example, the processing exercise tested my attention and cognitive flexibility skills by giving me words super fast and seeing if I can process them. Next app is the Peak app. Right off the bat, when you open the app, they ask you what you want to test and we have nearly everything we want. Memory, focus, attention, cognitive flexibility, emotional intelligence, and problem solving. Then, just like Elevate, they give us a short quiz to assess our level. And lastly, Brain Gamer. This one is not an app, but a website, and I liked it because again, it seems we're tested on relevant soft skills like memory, attention, thinking speed, perception, and logical reasoning. If you're on a desktop, well, Brain Gamer could be your preferred option, but if you're on the go, I enjoyed Peak more than Elevate because it felt more relevant to Pymetrix. Anyway, I would recommend practicing in a prime time in a day. Mine is in the morning because let me tell you, for some of these games, your brain really hurts thinking about the good answer. Also, make sure you practice for a day or two before taking the Pymetrix test. This will give you more opportunity to get better and be more comfortable. And again, I want to reiterate, if, let's say, you don't have good attention skills, these few games won't make you an expert. They are made simply to make you more comfortable and perform better, making your existing skills shine. To increase your abilities, however, I would recommend playing these games on a regular basis, but not sure if everyone would be down for that. Anyway, once you've got a little practice and feel confident, you'll be almost ready to start your Pymetrix games. But before you do that, let's set up your environment for success. You've done your research and you practiced a couple of brain games already. Let's make sure our efforts won't go to waste and set up our environment for success. Because no matter how much preparation you get, if you're not there mentally on THE day, it won't help you at all. First, I already told you, you should practice the games a day or two before you intend of taking the Pymetrix games, and this is for a big reason. You don't want to play the games and take on Pymetrix right after. You want your brain to be fully charged, not half dead. That's why I recommend again taking Pymetrix in a prime time during the day. Mine is first thing in the morning, so I would prepare the day before. Clear your agenda for tomorrow morning. Make sure you have at least one hour to play the games so that you take your time and not rush everything. Then I would declutter my desk for mental clarity, set up my computer and even open the Pymetrix website. Tell your roommates or family that you're taking a test the next morning for them to not bother you. Go to sleep early and make sure you have a full night of sleep. When you wake up and clean yourself, go take a big glass of water, grab some coffee, go outside for a full minute and breathe. Then finally, go to your desk. Don't do anything else. Don't check your phone. Don't look at your emails. Go straight to the test to make sure your brain is on focus mode. Take a sip of coffee, put your headphones for extra focus and start. So I played the Pymetrix games just for fun and to illustrate some of my points in the video only. Just to tell you, both my brain and my eyes were hurting after the test because of too much focus. That's why you need to take it in your prime time on a given day. 
As previously mentioned, I was tested in all nine soft skills. At the end of the test, you can see your results compared to everyone who ever took Pymetrix games, which was interesting. You can see I'm above average in focus, generosity, and effort. Again, Pymetrix says there is no right or wrong answer, it's just a question of fit. If the job I'm applying to requires generous people, then I think I would be a fit. But if they required big risk tolerance, then maybe I wouldn't be a fit if everyone else was above average. Anyway, it looks like I have made a great impression with my skills because even if I just applied like that and took the test, I just got an email inviting me for the second round of interviews, the video interview. If you get a similar email, I have a playlist to help you prepare for that as well that you can watch here or I'll also put a link in the description. Pymetrix games were a lot of fun and I truly believe they have a place in the future of hiring. If these games really can predict future performance, then I think it can be useful compared to simply reading a resume. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned how to prepare for this skill assessment test. If you want me to make a video about any other tests, then please let me know in the comment section below. In the meantime, if you didn't watch my other skill assessment video, well, you might want to watch it. I have five additional tips to help you nail your next skill assessment. Good luck on your preparation. And if you ever play Pymetrix games, then share your experience down below and let's all help each other. Hit the like button again to help this video rank and be uh, accessible for more people. It also helps this channel grow. Subscribe for more career and job search content and I'll talk to you soon. Ciao.